Hello everyone, welcome to Philip Mastermind. My name is ST and I will be your host for today. We are very happy to have Mr. Pua Lee Kirk, Chief Strategist of Philip Research with us today to share on his insights on the current market condition. Let's welcome Mr. Pua. My pleasure. Okay, so Mr. Pua, how would you comment on the COVID-19 pandemic as the number of cases continue to surge up globally? Well, if you watch the TV, all the news will tell you that it's still rising, it's still bad. No doubt, I mean, the pandemic is still there, but frankly speaking, I'm not that worried about the so-called second wave, second wave, third wave or whatsoever. Because if you look into it, using our K indicator, it shows that actually a lot of countries are tapering off already, right? I mean, even if you look at US, people are saying US is still very bad or whatsoever. Actually, the K indicator, since the beginning of this month, it has already tapering off. Yes, no doubt, there are still some countries you see are slowly creeping up, like what you see in France, in Germany. But like I say, I think most of the government in the world are quite prepared when there is a second wave, as compared to what previously they were during the first wave, where people are unprepared. Now, let's say even your second wave, third wave or whatsoever, they'll probably know how to so-called impose lockdown, not across the country or across a state or province, more likely to be across a certain region, across a certain small city part of it. Like what you have seen in China, when they have a second wave, actually, they just lock down on part of the Beijing on it. Right? Uh, yes, in that context, that's why you can see that during the second wave, China's stringency index gone up, right? And immediately after that, right, the second wave is being gradually under control, contained, and then tapering off. But again, so long as virus is there, it won't go away. You will continue to see some third wave, fourth wave. Even, in fact, China now is into the third wave, although it's not serious and. That's why it's being, being less reported right in the media. Now, the question is that with the, uh, this virus or pandemic is still continue, we can't expect the economy to go back to what it was before the pandemic. Yes, everybody, economy activities has resumed, but as a matter of fact, you think of it, a restaurant, because without vaccine, you still need to have a social distancing. So a restaurant that originally, before the virus, can sit, let's say, 50 people. Now, probably it can only allow to sit, let's say, half of it, 25 people, right? But when you need to eat lunch, you need to eat lunch. So they only have a revenue of half what it was before. Right? And you don't expect people to come for lunch at about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, right? Because lunchtime is lunchtime. Although this can be partially offset by the so-called delivery, right? I mean, you, but business won't back to where it was before. And on top of that, of course, there are still people who are being jobless because not all economic activity is back. But at least the gradually, economy is resuming back to its track. Hmm. Okay, Mr. Pua, so um, Putin, the president of Russia, he recently made an announcement saying that, you know, they have a vaccine ready. How reliable is this vaccine? And in your opinion, how will it affect the global economy? Well, we are not in the position to say whether this vaccine is reliable or not. Mm -hmm. uh, first, this will become a little bit more technical. First, we must understand the virus and then the vaccine, if any, right, to immunize people. This coronavirus in the world, there are only eight type, eight types of virus. Okay, eight type of virus, right? Of which three types are the similar, like the SARS, the MERS, and of course this COVID-19, right? 
and even for others which are normally like inf which is technically influenza virus you don't really have a perfect vaccine right and all these egg viruses are essentially affecting human respiratory system mm -hmm. and why it's difficult to develop this virus a vaccine for these viruses because it is a rna type virus okay. rna means that actually the gene actually is very short and it can actually become distorted very fast but this is very technical i'm not going to touch on that so bring it into your question of how effective it is we have no idea because based on the information and what you see in the so-called registration website in russia it just say that they will start to do the phase three in january so phase three means that after it's proven that if i inject this vaccine into your body that your antibody will appear so that means it can fight against the virus but how much is the dosage whether there will be a serious side effect or not until you test out to ten of thousands of people you wouldn't you wouldn't know so at this moment we can't say whether it's effective or not effective but all we can say that all the scientists in the world are trying very hard to develop vaccine against this COVID-19 and if it's successful then life will be back to normal and if it's not and if it's not then like what I always say social distancing is there so economy will not back to where it was before until when the world changed the way of how you live how you work that means with the social distancing there may be a lot of work from home but it doesn't mean all can work from home right there's no such thing as work from home for hotel right yeah. you don't say you stay at home and you check in your hotel room for what right so so some industry were definitely affected that's why right i mean for those who follow the news you know that warren buffett decided to sell off all the airline shares because airline will be one of if let's say back to your worst case situation that no vaccine cross-border traveling which is technically airline traveling and tourism will be badly affected mr Fua, so you know we've been hearing a lot of these two names which are mainly joe biden and donald trump so it seems like Joe Biden is currently winning the race for the U.S. presidential election. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Well, it's up to the American voters, right? We don't know because you still have more than 80 days to go. All we can be very sure is that if election is today, then probably Joe Biden will stand a very strong chance to win. But there's still another 80 over days down the road, right? And of course, if you look at the poll that's showing that Joe Biden is leading, that is no doubt. But don't forget that there are a lot of so-called hidden Trump supporters that they dare not say that they are Trump supporters. So that will only be reflected when come to the polling day. Right? So the question is that is still full of uncertainties. And my friend in America last time right before the 2016 election he mentioned that why don't give donald trump a try if he doesn't perform or doesn't live up to his expectation then four years later he just fired donald trump that means he doesn't vote for donald trump so i mean we don't know how many americans think like that right so it's very difficult but all we can see is that also another situation is that the previous election a lot of democrats and even the democrat supporters they don't like hillary so in that sense some of these votes may flow to donald trump so today it is joe biden it's not hillary clinton so we don't know all those so-called protest vote right whether it will flow back or not and all we know is that from now until november 3rd right donald trump will use all sorts of strategies try to regain back his support right i mean the poll so that he's behind joe biden right he want to regain back 
Because if you really look at history, since 1977, no president will get re-elected if his approval rating is below 50. And Donald Trump now is below 50, it's only 43. But to say to 50 is not that far away or so, right? So probably one of the strategy is very likely he will use is on China, right? On the trade, right? Act tough on China because American like hero, right? American like hero. You know, all the movies, you have Superman, uh, this and that are all heroes, right? Even Captain America is all heroes. So depends on his strategy, he may able to regain back support and ultimately he may still win. Of course, if he's, if he's not, then maybe Joe Biden is the new president. Again, we don't know until the polling date. Okay, Mr. Pua, so recently US, they banned a few Chinese apps like TikTok and WeChat due to the national security concerns. So will this further escalate the US-China tension? Technically, I don't think there will be a full-blown trade war before the US presidential election. The reason is very simple because US still relies a lot from China and this will not be able to switch overnight. Handphone, all right, no issue because you have Apple, right? You have Apple and then you have Samsung. But bearing in mind that currently, right, 97% of the antibiotic raw materials, chemicals, are all imported from China. So if US and China really break off, China will say, okay, enough is enough. I'm not going to sell you all these antibiotics. What will happen? A lot of Americans will die because they can't get antibiotics for a lot of diseases or illness, right? More than people who pass away because of coronavirus. And in fact, it's not only antibiotic. There are other uh, medicine as well, right? Like ibuprofen, which is technically a type of steroid, is also close to 90% relies from China. So in that context, I would say that he may seem to act up trying to get the voter support, right? Because American like hero, right? He tried to become a hero, but he wouldn't dare at this moment to totally break off with China. And another very important thing you need to know is that US presidential election, the election merchandise goods, right? Like the cap, the badge, and then even some flag showing that you are support Joe Biden or you support Donald Trump or even Mark Cup and all this. All these essentially are from China. Right? Why the goods are important? Because it helps the candidates to know who bought the goods so that they can trace down to where you are, where you live. Then they can go to a door to door, very grassroots campaign to ensure that you vote for them, for him. Right? So, in that context, all these goods actually are from China. And actually, it's from one province, one city only, from Zhejiangsen, and then the Saoxin city which is also famous for liquor, right? So if Donald Trump say, okay, I am going to quarrel with you, don't talk, and all these China will say, okay, I don't export. It also hurt him because frankly speaking, at this moment, again, it's very difficult to say who will win, but so far from the information come out from Sao Xin Su that manufacture all this election merchandise, they are manufacturing more Donald Trump goods than Joe Biden, right? And the previous election, actually, they manufacture more Donald Trump goods than Hillary, which the ultimate result is Donald Trump won, right? So this round, no idea. Uh, and I don't have a concrete figures because can't contact friends, you know, because of MCO, you know, can't really talk. And uh, it's very sensitive if you talk through the phone, you don't know whether your phone is being taped and all this. So I can't give a very concrete situation, but I think I'm relatively sure that any full-blown trade war will be after US presidential election. Market probably will still able to maintain its momentum 
although with some volatility, but definitely we have to be more cautious as you know approaching the election date because after that, irrelevant of who is the president, there may be a full blown trade war. Then market may react negatively, although we don't know it may react negatively. Thank you, Mr. Pua, for sharing your insights with us today. We will continue to bring more industry experts to share their views with you. So stay tuned and bye! Sexy, sexy.